first thing I can tell you about Kenny the Jet Smith is that he loves the city that he was raised in, New York City. So much so he calls himself Kenny NY and reportedly loves the good, bad, and the ugly that has to do with NYC, whatever that means to him. But I think the thing he loved the most of all about NYC was the fact that his family was there to support him through his tumultuous life. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, folks. Strap on in. We have a video on Kenny the Jet Smith's family coming up next. Everyone collectively in New York City was looking out for me. I could walk through New York City. But more than anything else, Kenny loved growing up in New York because of his family. Kenny's mom, his dad, William Smith. William, his, uh, his sisters, Gwendolyn and Wanda, his brother, Vince. This is... Uh... Well, it's not clear whether Kenny was the second, third, or fourth child in our research, he no doubt joined the family following his birth on March 8, 1965. His parents are actually both from St. George, South Carolina. That is where they had met before finally moving to New York City. As a child, every summer, Kenny visited his paternal grandmother, Grandma Agnes, in South Carolina. It was during his visits to the South that he got to understand his origin and learn that his great-grandfather was once a slave. It was also during these visits that he got to appreciate his father's efforts because back in St. George, things were financially difficult for the Smiths. This is why his father moved to New York for better job opportunities and to start a family with Annie Mack. Kenny wrote in his memoir, Talk of Champions, that his mother once spoke of the love she had for his dad when she said, quote, I love your father like no other. Find someone who loves you like I love your dad, end quote. And we'll dive into what made Kenny's dad, William Smith, so special coming up. In New York, Kenny's father, William, worked at Con Edison, which is a power service provider that was a long distance from their home. Every day after work, young Kenny and his brother Vincent would meet up with their dad at the subway station, which was 30 minutes away from their home. That way, they got the chance to share some precious time with him alone before they got home. But one day, something terrible happened to Kenny's dad on his way back from work. As they walked home, he looked dejected and didn't utter a word except to tell his sons to be quiet till they got home. When they did, he gathered the whole family together and told them how he was robbed at gunpoint by a young, nervous kid. He used his experience to teach his family about how staying calm always pays off. He told them, quote, There are two reasons why I'm here tonight. I gave him my money, and I didn't panic. Then he finished recounting his story with the statement, You see, the cool hands always wins. This is how Kenny's father was growing up. Cool, calm, and great under pressure. William worked with Con Edison for at least 20 years. He probably would have worked longer, but Kenny remembers the story of why he quit like it was yesterday. His dad was celebrating his 20th anniversary with the company. Yeah, 20 years. And you know what that got him? A mug. Literally a small coffee mug. William wasn't going to have it and would quit the job soon after. But William was never the kind of guy to be jobless. He was the epitome of the term jack of all trades. He was into a lot of professions such as real estate, cooking, carpentry, photography, floristry, and lots more even. Even while he was still working with Con Edison, he built a room in the house that was only used as a studio for his part-time job as a photographer. And then after he quit his job at Con Edison, he decided to open a store to sell flowers and Christmas trees of all things. And during the fall and winter, money was coming in heavily for everyone, but especially during Christmas, which brought in enough money to be able to take care of the family, allowing him to spend more time with them and to spend more money on them in general. And trust me, Kenny and his siblings were very grateful. It's no wonder why Kenny credits his dad for being so creative, industrious, and hardworking, but what about basketball? What part did William play, if any, in shaping Kenny into a basketball star? Well, as far as sports went, Kenny's family loved all of them and usually enjoyed time together watching the New York Knicks and the New York Yankees, the baseball team. Kenny's father, on his part, was a diehard sports fan and Kenny usually supported the same teams that his dad did. While it's not known whether William was the one who taught young Kenny how to hoop, he and Kenny's mom never missed anything their son did in school. From basketball games to even school plays, they were always there. William also helped make the important decisions in his life as a kid. When Kenny was 13 and already a star on his youth basketball team in Queens, it was his father who advised him to join an AAU team in Harlem. This would prove to be the right decision because it prepared him for the big stages with his first real test coming when he signed on to play with North Carolina University alongside Michael Jordan. 
This would prove to be the right decision because it prepared him for the big stages, with his first real test coming when he committed to North Carolina University alongside the legendary Michael Jordan. But first, he had to go through the rough stages. He had to grind and battle with injuries. But he was lucky to have amazing parents by his side. Like that time, Kenny had a major injury in 1981 when he was in the 11th grade. He had broken the growth plate close to his knee and had to have surgery. After the surgery, when he woke up, his mom and dad were standing beside his bed and his father asked him this. This injury can stop you and you can become a lamb or you can work hard to become a tiger. Who's eating who? Any kid would pick a tiger, of course, if they had a dad to tell them that and Kenny indeed decided to become a tiger of sorts on the basketball court. But if you think William Smith was an amazing parent, wait till you meet Kenny's mom. Kenny wrote in his memoir, quote, If you want to know where I get my competitive spirit, my loyalty, and my family first attitude, look no further than my mom. I am truly a mama's boy. Annie Max Smith worked as a kindergarten teacher's assistant in the same class Kenny happened to be in. This gave them much more time together, and they were practically inseparable in and out of the classroom. Annie Max Smith was an extremely intelligent woman and usually dropped sound quotes about anything that Kenny was lucky enough to pick up and use as a guide in life. And when he was six, his mom always told him he could be anything he wanted to be, even the President of the United States someday. Kenny, I see that you will be great at something. I'm not sure what it is, singing, sports, politics but I even believe you can be the first black president. You have greatness inside you. And when Barack Obama ended up winning the presidency in 2009, Annie Mack Smith told her son on the phone, you know that was supposed to be you, the first black president. Their time together also involved bus rides to and from school, since Kenny's siblings attended another school elsewhere. During these rides, his mom taught him how to pay for bus fares by letting him do it himself. This was her way of teaching him independence until Kenny was able to do everything by himself. This would come in handy when Kenny was seven and his mom couldn't take him to school because she had a sort of surgery. Kenny would also learn more things from his mother as well. One valuable lesson his mother taught him was, Kenny, God never said the cup will be full. He said it will runneth over. Go get your cup, baby. This was her own way of pushing him to dream big without fearing limitations because she believed that God wanted everyone to have everything they wanted and more and it is a lesson Kenny also taught his kids later on. Kenny's mom also knew ways of motivating Kenny to be a better student academically. When Kenny wanted to buy his first car in college, his mom insisted on paying part of the amount, but only if he got at least B's in school. I'm going to give you half, but here's the rules. No B's, no keys. And that statement would be repeated often to Kenny by his college basketball coach Dean Smith as a way of motivating him. Kenny would complete his college years in 87 and was selected by the Sacramento Kings in the 87 NBA draft as the number six overall pick. But even though being an NBA player comes with a lot of distractions to say the least, Kenny didn't forget all the teachings his parents had raised him with. Kenny usually credits his mother for his spirituality, and this was something that stayed with him throughout his NBA career and even his later life. I don't know if Kenny does it before going on air on the show Inside the NBA, but back when he was still hooping in the NBA, he never missed reciting Psalm 23 to himself before every single game, and this was a habit his mom taught him. Kenny also revealed in his book that his mom would become friends with some NBA figures herself. To LeBron James's mom, Gloria Marie James, Kenny's mom has some friendly encounters around the league. When Charles Barkley got to know about Kenny's mom, he too grew close to her, and he started to refer to her as mom himself. It wasn't Barkley's fault, and he just had that effect on everyone. She seemed like everybody's mom. So you can imagine how Kenny must have felt when his mom was diagnosed with dementia. The disease was so bad that she could no longer talk at one point, but she managed to speak her last words to Kenny when he visited her in 2017. When Kenny arrived at the house his mom was staying at, his sisters quickly alerted their mom that Kenny was around. Then, Annie Mack amazed everyone when she spoke for the first time in seven months, saying, Hey baby, I love you. Kenny's sister would then respond, We always knew you were the favorite. Annie Mack Smith would unfortunately later die in August of 2017 at the age of 79, and was paid tribute to during the Inside the NBA show on TNT. Passed away at the age of 79, Annie Mae Smith, so Kenny... Uh, en route to New York to be with Kenny couldn't take part in the show, but he did send a text to his colleague Ernie Johnson, who read it out to the audience. Part of the text read, I love my mom because of many reasons, EJ. She first and foremost introduced religion and the power of prayer to my life. There's absolutely nothing that's happened in my life. Nothing that we didn't pray about. 
Growing up, I talked to her every day, sometimes short, sometimes long. I guess you would say, I'm a mama's boy. Kenny may be a mama's boy, but there are also some other people that helped him to the point where he is today, from his older brother Vincent to his college coach Dean Smith and more. Vincent, who Kenny calls a basketball rain man and would later become a basketball coach, started honing his coaching skills when Kenny had that injury to his growth plate in 11th grade. Kenny recalls how Vincent created practice routines that helped him recover within only six months. They also threw their dad into the mix, running six miles every day together and doing some tough drills to get his injured knee back in shape. They made Kenny shoot over Vincent, who tried to use a broom to stop him. He also had to dribble a ball up the stairs or two balls while dodging other balls that were thrown at him. And it all paid off. So Kenny Smith's not the only one that Vincent taught. As I said earlier, he's kind of considered a basketball rain man of sorts. Basically, he's taught people such as Kenny Anderson, who's another former NBA player, Lamar Odom, and Ron Artest, or Meta World Peace, whichever you know him by. But I think that at least shows you that he was an amazing trainer who got to work with some talented guys because he was talented himself and now he works with the AIM High 12U team so he still does coaching in some capacity. Anyway, because of his coaching, Kenny was able to find a lot of different offers with a lot of different colleges. In fact, almost all the colleges in the United States showed interest in Kenny, but he liked only three. North Carolina, Duke University, and the University of Virginia. After visiting Duke and Virginia, he traveled with Dean Smith, coach of the UNC basketball team, to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Upon getting there, Coach Smith directed Buzz Peterson and Michael Jordan, who was a sophomore at the time, to show Kenny around. Kenny and MJ spent a lot of time together, like eating and going to basketball practice, just so Kenny could see what North Carolina was like. After a basketball practice with the UNC team, Kenny felt he wasn't good enough to play for UNC because he was afraid of having to compete with teammates like Brad Dougherty, Warren Martin, and the star of the team, Sam Perkins. Not to mention they also had future NBA greatest of all time, Michael Jordan on the team, but thank God for MJ because he was the one that would eventually change Kenny's mind and make him stay. One day after a basketball practice, MJ asked Kenny what he thought about the school, but Kenny said he wasn't sure yet. Then MJ told Kenny that he knows he should sign with UNC because, quote, you got that eye, that eye like I have. It's the eye of the tiger. That's crazy because Kenny's father had asked him whether he wanted to be a lamb or a tiger. It's kind of coincidental if you think about it. And now MJ had apparently seen that tiger in his eyes. Kenny would choose to play for UNC in 1983, and he and MJ would go on to become great friends and great teammates. Another important person that Kenny would meet in college is Don Revis. She would later become Kenny's girlfriend, but during his sophomore year, he almost lost her. We couldn't dig up where and when Don Revis was born or who her parents exactly are, but one thing is for certain, she hated slackers. Kenny was playing with Michael Jordan, they were all famous in school and so on, and Kenny was comfortable with life, but Don, after looking through his transcript, told him, I'm not sure if I can continue dating you. When Kenny asked why this was the case, she replied, Well, you're making it with C pluses and B minuses. What are you going to do in life with C pluses and B minuses? Kenny countered that he was going to be an NBA player, but Don pointed out to him that an injury might ruin that dream and she couldn't afford to date a B minus or C plus guy. So Kenny took her to the library to show her what NBA players made and tried to explain to her that a great career can be made from playing basketball. She was convinced to some extent, but she still pointed out the probability of him breaking his leg. Kenny saw her point and made it a goal to improve the academic side of things. They continued to date and would eventually get married at some point, but the exact year this happened uh, hasn't really been disclosed to anybody that we could find. Kenny and his wife would have their first child, a daughter named Kayla Brianna, born on May 13, 1993. Kenny described Kayla as a talented performer right from when she was little. At a young age, Kayla wanted to be like her mother Dawn, who was an actress and who has starred in movies such as Waist Deep, Run, Hide, Fight, and All of You. But aside from wanting to be like her mom, Kayla also made some important decisions in the house. Kayla is credited for her younger brother's name, KJ. Kenny reminds how he didn't know what to name his son, who was born on June 26, 1997, the same year Kenny retired from the NBA. Kenny had wanted to name his son Kenny Smith Jr., but also wanted him to have his own identity. So Kayla, who was just four years old at the time, told him it wouldn't be nice to have the same name and then a nickname would suffice, and that was how KJ came about. A few years later, Kenny and Don took Kayla to audition for the Lion King musical and two other movies when she was nine years old. 
She was so talented that she got all three parts, but she had to choose just two of them because of the filming timelines. Kenny and Don had picked The Lion King and one other movie, whose name has not been revealed. Nevertheless, Kayla lost the role in that particular movie because apparently there was already a contract on going with another actress they wanted Kayla to replace. Kayla was taken off the cast list because she had grown three inches taller. This meant that her character Nala was now taller than Simba, which couldn't be the case. The young Kayla was devastated, so it was time for Kenny to put into the use the all that he had learned from his parents about not giving up and seeing the bigger picture. His kid continued to push for her dreams as an actress and later a musician. She has starred in TV shows such as Black Lightning on CW and Meet the Smiths on TBS. As for her musical career, she debuted her first single, If You Love Me, in 2012. She continues to sing and act to this day. KJ is more outgoing and has an easy and graceful way of making friends quickly. It's no wonder why he majored in communications in college. He was basically born to talk to people for a living, much like his father, honestly. He might have been interested in basketball, and he even went on to play at his father's alma mater, but according to Kenny, KJ is more interested in the business side of things. He even told his dad one time that he planned to own the Los Angeles Lakers someday. Kenny believes that his son has had more contact with billionaires in a few months than he has personally done in years. KJ is currently the director of basketball for Range Sports, according to his Instagram profile. Kenny and Don had obviously done a great job with their two kids, but their union would unfortunately not last. When and why they had their divorce wasn't disclosed, they aren't very public with their personal lives, but they have both moved on long ago. Don has reportedly married Reginald Paul Martin, while Kenny found love with an actress named Gwendolyn Osborne. Kenny found in Gwendolyn Osborne another multi-talented and influential sensation. Born in Bath in the United Kingdom on August 7, 1978, Gwendolyn is an actress, wellness speaker, CEO, and podcaster, according to her official website, GwendolynOsborne.com. She has both British and Jamaican origins and started out as a model. Gwendolyn was the longest-serving model of color on the game show The Price is Right. She was on the show for 12 years, from 05 to 2017. She's also acted in big shot movies such as Wonder Woman 1984 and Jack and Jill, amongst others, in more minor roles. She had reportedly met Kenny at a charity event, and the two had kicked it off afterwards. They got married in 2007, and in 2008 they welcomed their first child, a son named Malloy, who is currently working his way gradually to basketball stardom. In 2012, Kenny and Gwendolyn had a daughter, London, but like her brother, Malloy, she has yet to make much of a public appearance. Obviously, she's just a kid. Nevertheless, when Gwendolyn married Kenny, she did so with a daughter of her own, Monique Green, from a previous relationship. Kenny wrote in his book that he met Monique for the first time when she was just eight years old, and he grew to love her. He loved that Monique was a woman of order, hard work, patience, and organization, but it was the part about order that Kenny admired the most about her. She usually made contracts with herself, and nothing or no one could ever make her break them. When she plans to do something at a particular time, best believe that nothing will stop her from doing it. Monique, like her mother, is also an actress and has starred in such properties as the Disney Plus series Big Shots and other things such as This Is Us, Prom Pact, Criminal Minds, I Am The Night, and many more. In fact, she and Kenny's first daughter Kayla were the ones that convinced Kenny to be an actor himself. When he got a part to star as a cameo as himself in the sitcom Grownish and the popular sports show Hustle, it was Monique and Kayla who taught him how to practice his scripts. Basically, because of his kids, Kenny continues to venture into the movie industry. Kenny actually also became an executive producer because of his kids in an attempt to use his popularity to ignite theirs. Because, I, and I produced it. So I was the executive producer and producer, and I went to Turner. Because at the time in my household, my daughter, who's now on NCILS in LA, and she's LLKJ's daughter on the show. So she's oh, his nice. daughter. So she's done like awesome. 10, 12 episodes. My other daughter just finished a Disney movie. And my ex was, she wanted to be in, in television. So I was like, as a, as, a, as a man, whenever all of those things are in your household, you're like, how can I help? You know? And yes, I was like, look. Absolutely. I was like, look, I don't want to do this. I'm doing this for you guys. So do, I'm just going to shine light on you guys so it can possibly help propel your career. And through that, that show got my daughter a record deal. 
I got my other daughter managing. So it might seem like he is using his influence to make things easier on his kids, but that's not really the case. Kenny himself has said that he doesn't let his kids have everything on a platter. According to a lesson he learned from his college roommate David Kohler, he believes in working through the steps of everything to understand it better. David Kohler came from a wealthy family that owned a multi-million dollar plumbing business, but instead of being placed at the top of the company by his father, he was made to be a plumber first, a valuable lesson. Kenny had been shocked about the whole arrangement, but he learned an important lesson about going through the process of things before reaching the top, even when the top is already at your disposal. So when his kids ask him for anything, Kenny usually makes them understand this important lesson by making them work for it. When my kids ask me for things, I'm like, no, you gotta be a plumber first. Besides, his children have been going through the process since they were kids, from Kayla acting since she was a kid, to KJ working his way to becoming a franchise owner, so it wouldn't have been a hard decision for Kenny to make when he executive produced and starred in the scripted reality show Meet the Smiths in 2015. Are you guys. meeting guys? Out? Guys. The show also featured all of Kenny's five children and Gwendolyn. Kenny disclosed that he loved the experience mostly because it brought all his kids together for the first time in a long time since many of them had been away at college. My kids were going to college, my older kids. So it was the first time that they were back. Unfortunately, Kenny and Gwendolyn's marriage would also not last. They each went their separate ways after Gwendolyn filed for divorce in October of 2018. During a podcast show with Big Boy TV in June 2023, Kenny revealed that he is currently single even though he has been spotted with a model that same month. Uh, that's, that's, that's what we put up. No, yeah. but see, like, I'm a single man. Right. Maybe he's just trying to keep everything on the down low, which obviously I respect, but I guess time will tell. It seems like everywhere you look when it comes to Kenny Smith's family, a celebrity of sorts is staring back at you, and Kenny Smith himself has really epitomized his family's visions of dreaming big, working hard, and enjoying the rewards, and I really appreciate the fact that he's been so great in terms of his attitude, even after all of his success. And this story kind of reminds me of Penny Hardaway's family, actually, and if you want to learn more about them, check out this video right here.